episode number 213 of the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Cheyenne Bryant. Dr. Bryant is a psychology expert, renowned life coach, the president of NAACP Branch 1069, founder of Dr. Bryant Institute, founder of Dr. Bryant Foundation Nonprofit, author of the award-winning reader's favorite five-star book, Mental Detox, motivational speaker, fitness advocate, community activist, and brand ambassador. Dr. Bryant is a designated life coach and producer for MTV Teen Mom Family Reunion. She holds a double degree in psychology and Pan-African studies. She entered the psychology master's program at University of Phoenix and pursued her doctorate degree in counseling psychology from Argosy University. Welcome to the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. I'm Michelle, a fertility acupuncturist here to provide you with resources on how to create a wholesome approach to your fertility journey. So happy to have you on, Dr. Bryant. I'm so excited to be on and looking forward to Michelle. So thank you so much. Yeah. So I would love for you to share your background with the listeners. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Dr. Cheyenne Bryan. I'm a psychology expert and life coach. I'm founder of the Dr. Bryan Institute, Dr. Bryan Foundation, and I am the on-camera life coach for the biggest show on TV, Teen yep. Mom, <laughs> that airs on MTV. The show is doing really well. We got nominated the best unscripted reality show for the 2022 MTV Award, so that's exciting. But overall, I do that on and off camera. I'm in private practice. And uh, it's, uh, it's just, it's really amazing to be able to formulate what I call my ABCs of manifestation and mental health, and then be able mm-hmm. to apply those to clients and see their lives change one client at, at a time. And the magic of it is it's the system and the blueprint that, and the tools that I'm giving and implementing, because it, it doesn't matter if my clients are locally where I am, I'm in Los Angeles, California, but I have clients that are internationally, I have clients in Egypt and Haiti and, you know, just Middle East, I have clients everywhere. And, and, and to see all of those clients from different, you know, genres and different demographics and countries and religions and, and different cultures have the same impact of like mm-hmm. just healing and peace and, and getting from their dark space to finding the light in their world, you know that if you do the work, it works. And that's the part mm-hmm. for me that had to go because I'm going, wow, these people are across the world and they're all getting what I believe is a human right, which is that yep. great quality of life, right? And peace of mind. We all deserve that. I mean, it's, it's just our birthright to have it. And we go into the world and we lose it by all of the traumas and the, the different experiences that we come into, but it's still ours to have. So absolutely, absolutely. And such truth. Is, exactly. It's just, it's the human experience. We all can connect with it internationally. It doesn't matter what our backgrounds, what the point is and what the specific subject is. I remember walking in New York City, actually having that thought when I used to live there and I'm walking by and I'm like, every one of these people that I'm seeing, like in Penn Station, like everyone's cried, everybody's lost, everybody's loved. It's like it's this human experience that we have. And it all acts the same. And so when you have those tools, it can really help with all of those backgrounds. Now you have an inner innate wisdom. It's just kind of a knack for understanding that. And how did that develop in your own life? I would love to touch upon that. Like, how did you figure that out in your own life? Do you always feel like you had that connection or that, I guess, intuitive understanding? Or how did you develop that and apply it to yourself and others? I love that question. Yes, I've always felt like I had a very strong discernment and I was very intuitive in regard to being able to um, tap in and tune in with people and and read what they weren't saying and and read the nonverbal and the non-behavioral conversations that were being, you know, placed within themselves or projected on people. <clears throat> but a big part of, of being able to be really tuned into self and people is trauma. And when you experience a lot of trauma, you tend to become very, very tuned into your environment and people because that is a part of, that became part of my survival mechanism of I have to be able to read the room and read right. the people so I understand, right? What I am in 
And then what has to be my next move? Kind of like the, the game of chess, where it's like, okay, if I can read the room, I can read the people, and I can better protect myself, because then I can be better prepared to survive whatever may or may not happen. And when and it's interesting because, you know, yeah, trauma is bad and, and, and it, it has an impact on people. But I've learned from taking my brokenness, right? And my broken pieces and making and finding peace in my broken pieces because the cure for the pain is in the pain. So yeah. as I went through yes. my, my Moses journey, I call it back into my pain, I my narrative from this very, you know, oh my God, I've experienced trauma and it was just so hard and all this pain that came from it. Coming into the light, now my narrative says, I was privileged to be a little girl from the inner city. I was privileged to be a, a little girl who experienced adversity. It is such an honor and privilege for me to have experienced those things because it gave me what you just described. It gave me a stronger discernment. It taught me not just how to survive, but the difference between surviving and thriving. And so now I can yeah. choose to thrive, right? And it taught me also how to identify other trauma-based people who are my people. Those mm -hmm. are my village. Those are my people. And it, it allowed me to see the pain in them and not have to be in pain to see it because mm -hmm. I've been there, right? And I know what it feels like to be in the trenches. And it's allowed me to see the darkness in them. But then when I was able to switch to, to the other side where I'm not perfect, but I'm, I'm definitely in a, a place where I caught God's peace and I'm rocking and rolling over here because I've done so much work to get here. Now I'm able, like I call myself a hybrid, I'm able to see the light in people, even when they don't see it. And I'm able mm -hmm. to see the, the peace in their pain because I'm going, that is the pain that I were I was in. And so I can see the peace in it. Let me help you get to that place that you're eclipsed at right now because your pain is eclipsing you from seeing the pleasure and the peace and all that it's going to bring you and when you get on the other side you're also i am also more grateful for this peace even if it's peace at a level of one if you look at a scale from one to ten that one feels like a hundred to me because there was a time when i was at a negative and i was at a deficit mm -hmm. and so when you have that polarity it's like you're so grateful for the adversity, you're so grateful for, you know, just the, the things that you go through, the traumas, because they give you so much more to be grateful for. And they allow you to really penetrate and connect with people at the heart space. And I always say, when you connect with someone at the heart space, you have a friend for life. Mm -hmm. If you connect sure. at the head space, when the memory goes, there you go. Right. And so the vulnerability wow, that's a really profound thing. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I came into to already having what I call the gift, the it factor. But my it factor became so much more enlightened when I when 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 God allowed me to experience both at both you know facets of of who I am, because we're not just one person. We're a lot of moving parts. We are. And we try to yeah. fit into one person and fit into this the societal construct box of be this person. But then you're negating all the other beauties of you. And so now you're not a whole person because you're only concentrating and showing up as one part of you when that's just not reality for us. Oh, 100%. And as you're talking, I'm thinking about, first of all, it's just, a, it's profound, like that you can look at all the trauma and see it as a gift. And I think that that's beautiful. Like there's, it's a choice. And I see this a lot because you can take something that's so traumatic or so difficult and, and also I'm not saying this to pressure anybody who's going through the darkness, because that's part of the whole process. But sometimes I do find that from stories that I hear that the going through the darkness and also myself, I had my own things when I was younger. And when you do go through that darkness, when you do really walk through it truly and allow mm. it like surrender to it, there's Ugh, an alchemy. That Sorry, that, 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 yeah. surrender, that. Yes. Ooh. There's a, there's yeah. an alchemy that happens that occurs and that's where transformation happens. And I think that when you walk through it and you have that, you speak the way you just spoke of 100%. gratitude. It's like, it opens your heart center. I get the chills saying this, but I mm -hmm. see that with people who've walked through it and, and alchemized really their being. Speaking of that, you know, the book, the alchemy one of my favorite books. And it talks yes. about all of that freedom in trusting the process, yes. which is that surrender thing you're talking about is when you 
get to a sense of self and you really tap into your source, whatever that is for whoever, whatever people call it, you know, there's not one word. So I, I want to welcome everyone's source, everyone's higher power, their God, whatever that is for me, it's God. But when you truly tap into that and you surrender and say, you know what, I'm going to trust myself in the process to be fully present in whatever it is and whatever form it takes, because I know truly with all of me that it's working for me, that alchemy mm-hmm. takes place yes. because listen, life, has the bigger plan for you. So we're not out here trying to figure it out. We're out here uh, collecting and calibrating what's already ours. And so if you allow that to happen, you're fine that what's yours is the perfect fit for you that you could never create if your hands were in the clay perfectly anyways, Mm -hmm. because what you have for you is already there. And that surrendering process says, I'm here to collect all my coins. All the smoke that's mine is for me. And so all I have to do is continue to show up in my journey. And I always say, and you have one job when showing up and that's to be happy. And if you show up in happy, then you calibrate that at which you are, which is the law of attraction is you attract who you are despite of who you think you are. And mm-hmm. the alchemy of it is I just have to show up and be present mm-hmm. because through my presence, right? I collect everything that's mine. So surrender is really the prayer of I'm ready for my blessing and I'm here and I'm present, right? And the resistance says, I'm afraid of everything that's mine. Mm -hmm. I don't trust that what's mine is a best fit for me. So let me keep my hands in the clay because I believe controlling it from my optics, stick with me, from my optics is a better fit for me, but your optics are limited to your environment of what you're seeing. And so if you want past that, you want to have your mind be blown, then you have to say, all I know is all I can see. So I have to surrender, right? For me to see the bigness and I can catapult and elevate to that at which I don't know, which will always blow your mind. And that's the trust surrender factor. And for me, that's so huge because it's the hardest thing to get people to do, but you're right. Once you've done it, you, I, I, I get excited to surrender. Like surrendering for me is, is an act of self-care and self-love. It's like a birthday party, a Super Bowl. I, I can't wait to surrender because I know on the other side of surrender from me doing it for so long is magic. It really it's is. Magic. It really is because it's energy. It's energy that we just don't see. We, we do not see everything, even physically or in, in any way, really. We don't see everything. There is a limitation to what we can perceive And that's the truth. And so I almost think about like, um, you see on those boat shows, like one guy's in the front and he's telling the captain what's going on. And the captain needs to trust this guy because otherwise it just won't happen. So sometimes you need to put the trust because if you don't, then you're just limiting yourself to what you can see in yourself to our limited perceptions. So there is this higher, and and I see you know, looking at ants and ant colony, I mean, they all work together in this incredible community. And there's this intelligence that tells them how to move and what to do and how to communicate. And and so this big intelligence doesn't just work on a small level. It just doesn't make sense that it would. It's got to work on a much larger scale. So it doesn't just end in our body. It's not just our cells that are intelligent. There's intelligence way past our body. So I always say that, and and it's true that the only way you can really know this is by surrendering. I think that that's the, that's the thing. That's the trick. Cause it's hard sometimes to surrender when you're in fear, but the only way to know this or feel this vastness and this magic is by the challenge of surrendering. And it is a challenge that pivoting, that changing, that letting go can be very hard. It almost feels like a death in a sense that just that letting go. Oh yeah. No, you mourn it. And, and I love how you said, <clears throat> you know, first I want to say you, you, you have it. And, and I, I don't say that oh. often, I'm being honest in my pot and I do podcasts, you know, interviews all the time. I'm always doing interviews on TV. I mean, all, this is what I do. It's my world. It's my life, but you have it. And when you're talking, you, you have the it factor, you have the magic. So I just wanted to put that out there with you. I'm Thank sure you, you know it. But I well, that means, it. that means the world. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I see it in you and it's like, ah, uh, you have, it. and it's, it's very liberating and it's very freeing. Right. When I 
find someone. I'm going, she gets it. She's my village. Okay, good. <laughs> but you said, you know, you the captain has to trust the guy in front. And I and I feel like people are they, they're so caught up in putting their trust in the guy in front being the person outside of them. But the guy in front is just you trusting yourself. And so the thing is this, Michelle, I don't have to worry about, can I trust you? I have to make sure I can trust me. Watch yes. this, to choose, to choose the best quality of people that are trustworthy. And to understand that if you have a human, because it's just very human to do things that are outside of the trustworthy gamut, that I trust myself to either hang through that with you or pivot the heck out of this. Mm -hmm. Either way, I have to trust me to know what to do when that guy in front says, hey, we're going to hit a big wave. Mm -hmm. What do I do as the captain of my sea, right? Yeah. And in that, as the captain of my ship, did I choose the person I know that I can trust and surrender to? And that's the core nucleus of the marriage and relationships. Can I choose you? Because my saying is this, if I choose you, I trust you. Mm -hmm. And it's not for you. It's for me to not have heartache or headache. It's for me to be in the surrendering space of trust because whatever happens between you and I, remember with the theory of surrendering because magic is in surrender, I still have to trust the process if I want sure. the magic, from what you can bring me. Because it's not what you do. It's what I receive from what you're doing. And so the doing people get caught up in what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And even again, the Bible said, it's not what it looks like. It's what we will have it to be. And then you said energy goes beyond us and outside of our body into the world. It goes into the galaxy. It goes into spaces that we would never be able to even be in contact with. Right. And so with that, you know, we have dominion over everything. Our, our job is to possess it. And with knowing that we have dominion over everything, which is limitless and abundant, right. Our dominion does not stop at what our optics allow us to see our perception and our perception is skewed because we're also sharing that with other people who are creating in our world and if we know that we don't stop and bank on that perception being everything we get excited about what we see because what we know what we see is about to expand when we surrender to it and say this is amazing <clears throat> what's more mm -hmm. what else because now i've taken my fear and my fear now is excitement because they're polarity. They're just experienced differently. Totally. And it's yeah. a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. And that's key. Yes, it's a choice. And I've seen this happen. I see this with my own life. I've seen it with my patients. I've seen it with my clients. Like I've seen them getting to this point where they, they have surrendered or it was like a click. And part of it's just tired. I'm tired. So, th th you know, that tiredness actually helps them surrender and then they let go. And then all of a sudden synchronicity happens, right? It It's crazy. They get the phone call, they find the right doctor. And we were going to talk about that also, like finding your right team, right? To trust you were, when you were saying that I was thinking about finding the right doctor that believes 100%. in you. Yes. Yes. And I love you said, you're saying so many good things. Gosh, you, such a, you said, you know, that they get to a place of being tired and we call it emotional fatigue. They get to a place of just emotional fatigue. It's like people, there's army fatigue, right? There's emotional fatigue and you're right. But see, I say it in my book, Mental Detox, change is inevitable. You can either surrender to it or you can be dragged to it. To, true, you, I love that. Fatigue, right? That's you being dragged to the surrendering place because you're going to surrender no matter what. And so do you want to be dropped to your knees to surrender or yeah. do you want to do it gracefully? And the gracefulness of it is whether you trust the process or not, the process is going to take its form. Oh yeah. Let me say That's again, whether true. you trust it or not, it's going to take its form. And so you're, tr you're, you're not trusting something that's going to happen anyways. That's agony that you are bringing, even if it's unconsciously onto yourself. And so if it's going to take its form either way, why not surrender, trust it, and enjoy the heck out of the process as much as you can, and then allow everything else to come together to meet you where you are unable to go because of your optics, because of your perception, because of your human side. Your mm -hmm. spirit is already way ahead of you. Right. So when you say the captain is supposed to trust the guy in front, that's the spirit that's ahead of you. Yeah. And it, 
you have dominion over everything. So when I wake up in the morning, especially when I'm on vacations, I look out of my resort window, wherever I'm at, and I go, oh my God, I have dominion over all of this? And I'm seeing just trees and animals and water. And, and I'm going, God, you thought that much of me to tell me just to possess what you've already provided? And then I get overwhelmed in this beautiful, magical, abundant way that goes, yeah, it's all yours. And so then I'm going, well, what will I like possess today? What will I just go grab today gracefully? And then your momentum of the day, things just fall at your bedside yes. at your feet because you're now accepting, surrendering is accepting the magic that's already yours versus resisting what's yours. And that part is the part that makes me want to fight so much harder for my clients when we're in session or when I'm, you know, on a camera, because I see the resistance and I see the magic and the blessings you're resisting. And so it was like, I want to rip you wide open because I'm going, you have no idea what's on this other side. Yes. Just free, let it go. Yes. And that <laughs> part that drives me because I'm going, it's so much magic. It's so much magic and you have to have it and you have to have it because I have it and I can't just have it and you have to have it. Yes. And that's the part that keeps me really driven to say, we got to get you to the other side, whatever it takes. Totally. And one of the things I was just thinking about is when you are on the other side or you're resisting, it's kind of like you get stuck in this just justifying, you're justifying the suffering. There's this justification that keeps us there. And it's all like mental. Like we have a reason to suffer. I should suffer. I'm allowed to suffer, which you are. There's a time and a place, but then there's this yeah. kind of stuck for a long time, which is not helping you progress. It's really holding you back. Yeah. And what you're describing is folks arguing their limitations. They are, and it's not with people, it's our narrative, our own psychological narrative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will argue with us for us. It will go to court for us and justify our limitations. And mm -hmm. it will tell you that, don't you see what it looks like? Don't you see what you've been through? Going back to that trauma, don't you see the trauma that you've experienced? Man, you're a trauma-based person. You don't deserve to be in peace or pleasure. Don't you see how life does you? And then people go, life just does what it does. But life is doing what you associate to life does what it does. What is your association to that? And what is your association to trauma? Because my association to trauma is no longer negative for myself. I don't negate other people's you know, association of it, but it's because I've seen the reward that trauma has bred me. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful. I, I, there's times where I'm like trauma, thank you trauma contrast you have been my best friend i'm not saying i invite you to come traumatize me again because that is impossible with my perception of believing that you know what it's working for me and so it's almost like trauma couldn't come in and take the better of me if it wanted to because mm -hmm. my narrative would be oh game time a blessing's coming oh it's getting real challenging i can't wait to see what this breeds so it couldn't take me because i govern me I am here, right? In trauma, in life, in my mind is here to serve me. And I have come to the peak of being president of my democracy. And so it can't vote me out like it can in the world. I am the head CEO of my executive in my mind. So I will let the board know who stays and who goes. And so I hire and fire as much as I need to within my own narrative. So it is always serving me. When I tell it, we're not doing that today. We're not doing that today. We're not thinking that today. We're not thinking that today. So my narrative is louder than the trauma. My narrative is louder than my distorted thinking. Has it always been like that? Heck no. But it's gotten to that because of also what you said, Michelle. I've gotten to a place where I was so emotionally fatigued, but I was also pissed off more than I've ever been. Not with so much one thing in particular, but with life in myself, because I felt like I couldn't figure out the blueprint of the peace that I knew I wanted and I deserved. And when I got to that place of being pissed off, I governed myself. I became CEO of my mind. Mm -hmm. I became the person that dominated my world, not people, but my world. And my belief system became so confident to where if people heard my narrative that I say to myself, they'd say she's arrogant but I'm so humbled to people. So there's a balance. I tell people, you need to be so strong in the belief about yourself that you are arrogance on freaking steroids with you, but you are 
completely humility on steroids to people. Oh, I love that. that's how you exalt yourself. Yes. And so you yes. got to go here with you and you got to be okay with taking charge and saying, hold on, everything here is to serve me. So how will I have it serve me today? And if, if something comes back that I didn't order, you don't make lemonade out of lemons. I cannot stand that saying. I, I know that it's good for people who are trying to get through some things, but if you didn't order lemonade, you send the damn thing back and you say, I want orange juice. I love that. That's great. So it comes back, I'll wait for my orange juice. Yes. Right? That's, like, no, yes. Because you're settling and you're not trusting that the process says you will get that at what you want. You got to be okay with sending some things back. Don't mm. act out of despair. You act out of sturdiness. A sturdy yoke understands, I don't want that. I'll wait because waiting means I trust that it will come. Mm-hmm. It's okay. In the waiting, don't just sit. I tell everyone in the waiting for a harvest, plant so many more seeds. So every day that you wake up, you wake up to a harvest. You don't have to plant one seed. You plant, plant, plant while you're waiting for the harvest. And when the harvest comes, you enjoy this harvest while these other ones are being nurtured and they're starting to harvest out. Now here goes a trick because this is where I've gotten to and where I'm at. I have so much harvest because I've been planning and doing so much work that I got to a place where I told God, I love it all, but now I'm overwhelmed with the goodness. But would you want to be overwhelmed with the goodness or the darkness? So now sometimes I'm going, It's so much and it's so amazing that I end up in this like joy fatigue, but it's good. I end up so, like I overwork myself with like, I'm so grateful. This is so much. This is so amazing. Oh my God. I'm like, let me relax because I still have a whole day to get through where blessings are pouring in and I have to open up packages and magic happens and I get to feel this joy. And I want to tell everyone who's listening, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you've heard. 1 billion percent. I would bet any DNA, any money in the bank, any relationships, anything I ever have touched or will have that, that peace on the other side, that light on the other side, what I call for me, God's peace is 1 billion percent attainable and maintainable and sustainable because I've had it. I've done it. And I am, I am a product of the inner city, the hood product of two teenage parents, product of grandparents having to help raise me because of it, product of abandonment and neglect. I mean, confusion. And the oldest of seven, I had no one to look to. I had no mentor in front of me. I was the first to go to college. I mean, and I literally tapped into myself in a source that I didn't even know really exists. I just knew his name was God because we grew up on that, but I didn't understand the extent of his power. And when I tapped into that and I made a commitment to trust myself, with everything I have and always bet on me, life opened up. And I and I cannot tell you that this place of, of, of enlightenment and peace, it's a real place. There's a real heaven on earth. It, there's, you don't have to die and go through things or even die on earth through trauma and not die physically, right? To experience this garden of Eden. It's described to us because it's created here in our perception, in our narrative, and in how we show up for ourselves every day. And I want people to know that because this is not a fairy tale. This is not a book I'm promoting by saying it. It is a human right. And I want everyone to have it, but they have to know that they can get there. But on my way there, it was a Moses journey. I mean, I was confused. I was mad at God. I was mad at the world. I was just so frustrated and I had fatigue moments and I had moments of, of feeling good and moments of feeling bad. And it got really dark and I just kept fighting. Even if my fight was from exhaustion, if my fight was just a word that I said to myself, if if it was just breathing my breath to hear it, to say, but I'm still here. So there's still got to be something that's still in me. That is what gets you to the Moses journey. And the Moses journey is once Moses got to the Red Sea, we all know one thing happened. It split. And he got to the Red Sea and the people behind him said, you got us here. And we have this army of people behind us. We're about to die. Because if we cross the Red Sea, you can't survive the Red Sea. Mm-hmm. And we got people who are outnumbered. And Moses said, I surrender. I don't have the answers, but I'm going to wait here. Like I said, with that lemonade, I'll wait for what I want. The Red Sea opened up. They walked across. The Red Sea closed up so the troops couldn't get to them. That's the power of surrender and saying, I don't know what's going to happen when I get to this Red Sea, but I know it has to be something magical. And then you let magic come in. Mm -hmm. And so I just want folks to know that because this is not, it gets dark, it gets weird. 
And I want to tell you it does, but it's, it's, it's the whole saying of it's good for me that I was afflicted. And you know what that means as you keep going through that Moses journey. So embrace it and try your best to enjoy it only because enjoyment is coming. That's the only reason why I say try to enjoy it because it's like being in a place of misery because of it from a person who's gone through it. I say this with all respect, you're wasting your time because as you get through it, there's nothing to be miserable about, about when you get to that space that you're coming into. And I, and I know it's hard to see because you don't see it, but it's there. I promise you it's there. You know, it's interesting. So many things came to my mind as you were talking. And I had one patient who the whole lemonade thing, going to doctors that were, that are telling people, these are your limitations. Here you go. And I have a lot of credentials and I know what I'm talking about, but you can't do this. And really defying the odds. I had one of my recent patients actually on a podcast sharing her story, Amy, being told that she needed egg donor or that she was perimenopause and she ended up having two healthy kids after, after that. And it's the lemonade thing. No, thank you. I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to go with your suggestion. I'm going to go with my suggestion. She just decided, you know what, internally she felt like doing something natural would help her more. And it did. And that seems like a risk when you're in it, when you're right in front of a doctor who is very well known, established, and is telling you, these are your options. These are your limitations. And the same thing, like we talked about with gaslighting, patients asking or knowing within their heart that they need X, Y, and Z diagnosis or more procedures. I've had people with miscarriage and then having tissue left in there, feeling it physically and being told to go back home. And then later on finding out that they were right. Your intuition, knowing that, listening to that, I can't even state how important it is. And having that really, I love that that whole lemonade thing is just awesome because it really comes down to that, not settling on yourself when you know deep inside your inner wisdom speaking to you. And that's the trusting process. It's yeah. when I said I committed to always trust me and to always bet on me. Doesn't mean that I won't also bet on you, Michelle, right? In 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 put all that I can into investing in your well-being. It just means that in the midst of doing that, there's a thing called Mm self-love. And the epitome of self-love is I'm going to trust me because I choose me and I'm going to bet on me. And whatever comes up for me, even if it goes against societal constructs, it goes against your parents, it goes against your kids, it goes against professionals and experts who who are still good in their field. And they have all the data, they have all the science behind what they're saying. But that has nothing to do with the promises that have been given to you, has nothing to do with what you said while they're giving you options and options are just limitations, right? Right. You still have choices, which is abundance. See, choosing in in free will is abundance. Options are limitations because they're telling you have these four, choose one. Mm -hmm. When you say, no, I have a thing called choice. Choice means I can create what I want for myself. So I can create these options that you're talking about. I'm not limited to what you're giving me. And I love that because it happens all the time with doctors. It happens all the time with women in fertility and giving birth and, and feeling as though they can't do it, but it's the narrative in their mind. And I, and I almost think it's the universe and like God's way of saying, okay, I have to put you in a place of what you said of exhaustion or fatigue or being, I call it pissed off with hearing what you don't want to hear for you to take control and become the ding president of your democracy mm-hmm. and say, no, you know what? That's not what it's going to be for me. Mm-hmm. And I see that I have to trust myself and I have to be the quarterback of this team. And I got to quarterback myself through this. And from there, not only does that woman gain a child, but she gains a woman through her experience and she gains power and she knows how to anchor herself in it. So it becomes a win, win, win. Whenever you're in that situation of like, this is all my options. No, that's the universe saying, because I know that you can think bigger. I'm going to corner you so you can think bigger because I know there's more in you. I'm going to put pressure on you so that diamond can explode because right now you're a pipe, right? And a pipe is something that's closed in. Pipe is closed in. A diamond is exposed. And so you get into these situations and circumstances And this is why I say I get excited when I'm in them. So life couldn't take that jam with me because now that I understand what pressure means, I feel it 
but I'm like, oh, game time. Let's mm-hmm. do this. Pressure me up. And I've always told God one affirmation. Amazing. I say, yeah, be gentle with me. But if you're going to bring it, bring it. I've said that to life. You know, when things have gone starting to look a little weird, I go, okay, so if you're going to go to a nine, bring me a 50 because I'm not weak. So pressure me on, because if this blessing is going to be a blessing and I'm going to feel it, bring it in, bring it on because I want the biggest thing you have for me. And I'm not afraid of the pressure because I, if I trust myself and I know my source and I've seen how big my God is and there's nothing that can outdo an unlimited abundant God or a source. So I always tell life, well then bring it. Or I say, you're not doing enough. And when you do that, life says, okay, this person's not to be reckoned with. Because when life sees it can't take control over you, it goes to another person that it can. So that's sitting in the seat of self and trusting your power. And when people do that, especially women, and I love men, but I'm just saying, especially women, <laughs> yep. oh, oh, we, oh, we move, that's the faith that moves yes. mountains, literally moves mountains. And mountains aren't just something physical. Mountains are your your, ne- your neg- negative narrative. Mountains are the things that you've always wanted. Mountains are the mommy guilt that you feel sometimes that needs to be moved. Mountains are all those things that don't serve you. Mm-hmm. But when you get in your power, I mean, women are magical. We just are. Oh, totally. And I always say this, like our minds are so powerful. We don't need to wait for a science study to show how powerful we are. We are so powerful. And I think that that's one of the biggest setbacks of human condition is not knowing our power and not owning our power. But then when you do actually find it, it's incredible. Oh, it's magical. And then you, then you again, once you get to that place, your, your human side still comes in, but I promise you life just won't have its way with you. It's almost mm-hmm. like okay. not almost life does imagine yourself walking into a beautiful, either ballroom or a beautiful hotel resort, how you have the two doormen who open the double doors right for you. When you walk in, you're like, Oh, wow. Thank you. When you stand in your power, life becomes the doorman. When you get to walk up to things, circumstance, life's blessings. You have these two doormans called life one and life two, and they open the door for you. You just mm, walk in off that carpet. You do, because that's your power versus you saying, you know, wait a minute, I'm not in my power. So when I get up there, I have to check to see if the door is unlocked. I have to open up these two doors for myself while I carry my luggage, total different weight. Mm-hmm. Surrendering says, no, I'll walk up because I trust that everything opens up for me. And life does. Mm-hmm. It does it for me. It does it for so many of my clients. I see it do it for folks that who are my mentor, who do coaching with me. Mm-hmm. And so it's magic. And, I, and I'm, I'm so passionate about it because, you know, I'm an empath. And so it's like the magic that I feel, again, if I could just inject people in it, when I walk by them, I would like secretly just inject them with it. But obviously I can't do that because I'd be in trouble for doing that. So. <laughs> 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 Not that easy, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. But you know what though, you do emanate it. I think that when you embody it, you emanate it and you reach people on so and you do have a transformative effect when you emanate that and stand in your power. I think that that's because we're we're not islands. We really do impact each other and our energy influences through Zoom, through TV, through everything. Yeah, no, absolutely. Totally. You're you're exactly right. Yes, yes. And so for people who want to work with you, how do you work with people? 100% I am in private practice as a psychology expert and coach, and they can reach me on my email, which is contact Dr. Bryant at gmail.com and Dr. is just D-R, not spelled out, Bryant mm-hmm. at gmail.com. My social media is underscore Dr. Bryant. You can DM me. I'm, I'm very good at responding. Or you can go to my website, drbryant.co, and that's drbryant.co, not .com and send a message to that contact form. Or the best way I think is you Google Dr. Bryant and some type of way, magically the universe has me number one on Google. So awesome. look at how, <laughs> how my serenity has worked for me, right? And yeah. you can find me that way. But I, you know, and I have a huge caseload and there, there's always a slight wait list, but we tend to move the wait list really quick and get people in. So I don't want anyone to feel discouraged um, if you do reach out and you know, there's a small wait list, but we get you in, everybody is being seen, going to be seen. And I pour everything I have into every single client. And so, you know, you're going to get the best and you can come in any form you want because, you know, healing is contagious in, in pieces and love is. And so I'm just, just a little stinker and you're going to get this love and this good stuff and this healing either way it goes. I love it. 
This was so much fun to talk to you. It is really fun because I do feel like you connect with people on a soul spirit tribe kind of level. And there are certain people that I immediately feel like, oh my God, this is like awesome. And it just flows. The wisdom just emanates and flows and I love it. And so thank you so much. This was like a really amazing experience for me to have you on today. Thank you for having me. And again, you, you got it. No, I'm serious. So I mean, that means the world. Thank you so much, Dr. Bryant. Thank you for having me. And thank you to all your guests for listening. I hope they learned a few things and that it will change their life. That's the intent. I'm sure it will. I mean, so many things that you said were life-changing. So thank you. So that concludes today's episode. You can find all of the links mentioned on the episode notes. If you're enjoying these episodes, please take a moment to share and leave a review. Reviews mean everything to podcasters, and I really enjoy hearing from my listeners. You can also find me on my website at www.thewholesomelotus.com or email me at info at thewholesomelotus.com. I love hearing from my listeners. If you're interested and want updates as well as a free ebook on my top 10 fertility boosting habits, you can visit my fertility page on www thewholesomelotus.com. I thank you so much for listening in and hope that you have a beautiful day.